What's good everybody? Today we'll be creating an NFS server in our virtual home lab. This will help us practice with these two RHCSA exam objectives right here. Mount and unmount network file systems using NFS and configure AutoFS. I'm planning to make a video dedicated to the AutoFS auto mounter, so stay tuned for that. Now, without further ado, let's get started. What we'll want to do first is log into one of our virtual machines. So in my case, that's going to be app server 2. And then I'll grab a root shell. And then we're going to be installing some packages. So it's a good idea to run yum update just to make sure we're up to date. And from there, we're going to run yum install nfs-utils. Say yes to that. And there we go. I'm just going to clear up the screen. And now we can create the directory for our export and set some permissions and ownership on it. So first we'll create the directory with make dir dash p for parent directory, and I'm gonna put it in slash SRV NFS fun. The name is arbitrary, but I just decided to call it fun because I'm feeling fun. Um, <laughs> okay, so from here we'll add a group um, similarly named fun with group add dash g for the group ID, and here I'm gonna pick something relatively distinct like one, two, three, four, five, and also name the group fun. We can add the admin user to the fun group with user mod dash a capital G fun admin. And now admin is part of the fun group. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll change the ownership of our fun export directory with ch own. And I'm gonna set the user owner as the nobody user and the group owner to fun. And then we'll just do that on the directory. There we go. I'm also going to set set group ID permissions on the export directory with chmod g plus s and then srv nfs fun. So this will make it easier for um, files inside of the fun directory to inherit the group permissions of the parent directory, which will be good since um, it'll make it easier for us to collaborate in this folder. So I'll just clear the screen again. And now what we can do is edit the etc exports file and use it to define what IP slash host names can access our share and with what mount options. So this will be pretty simple. First, we'll define the export directory. So for us, that'll be slash SRV NFS fun. And then I'll tab over and provide an IP range such as 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Then in parentheses, you give your mount options so I'm just going to put in sync and read write. And what sync does is it makes sure that writes that are actually sent to the NFS share are written to the disk. So this is supposed to help prevent data loss. And then the read write obviously is just so that by default the share is mounted in read write mode. So that should be good. And then I can just write and quit the file. And what we'll do now is make a firewall exception for um, our NFS service. So we'll just run firewall dash cmd dash dash permanent and then dash dash add service nfs just like that and then we can reload the firewall configuration with firewall cmd dash dash reload and what we can do now is start up the nfs server with system ctl enable dash dash now nfs server just like that. And um, now we can start to test our share on our workstation VM. So I'm going to head over to workstations console and uh, over here, I'm going to make a mount point directory with make dir dash P uh, mount NFS fun. Uh, it looks like I need to do that as root. There we go. And I might as well go ahead and uh, grab a root shell for this too. Um, then what we'll do is make sure that we have the NFS utils installed. So yum install NFS utils so that we'll be able to mount it. And it looks like we already have them installed, so that's good. And then I'm also going to group add the group um, 12345, also known as fun, so that it matches up with our app server. Then what I'll do is add the admin user to the fun group, 
just so that everything's consistent. And then what I can do now is mount dash type NFS and then provide the server. So that's app server two colon and then the directory of the share. So that's SRV NFS fun. And then I'll just put it into our mount point. So that's mount NFS fun. There we go. And now it's mounted. Now, if you've gotten to this point, it's going to be time for a little bit of troubleshooting. So you'll notice that if you try to write a file to your new NFS directory, you'll get a permission denied error. And the reason for this is actually twofold. First of all, uh, when we ran user mod add group on our user, it didn't take effect. We actually need to su into admin again. That way the group membership takes effect. So that's the first thing, but um, that doesn't completely fix the problem. The next part is that um, the permissions on our directory are wrong. So if I run ls-ld on serve nfs fun, you'll see here that the group permission does not allow writing. So we need to change that as well. So we can just run chmod g plus w and then serve nfs fun. And so that should fix that right up. And so now if we try to touch that file again, it works. So now we know that everything's working, so we can establish a little bit more persistence by creating an entry in the FS tab file. So what we'll do now is unmount our NFS share, just like so, and then we'll edit the FS tab file. So here we'll add a new entry, and then we'll just put in the server and the directory. So that's app server two dot lab net colon and then SRV NFS fun. Then our mount point will be mount NFS fun, just like so. The file system will be NFS, and then our mount options will just leave them as defaults. And then the dump will be zero and the pass we'll make it two. Uh, we don't want this to prioritize too highly, right? Then we can just write and quit that, and then we can test our FS tab entry by running mount a. So I should do that as sudo, so sudo mount a. And now if I check the mount v and grep for NFS, you'll see here that it is indeed mounted once again. So that's very good. And, um, I mean, that's going to be about it for this video. Um, I think I showed quite a bit about how to get the NFS server set up. You can expand on this a lot more. Like for example, if I go back to the exports file, um, instead of an IP range, you can actually put in host names. Um, I'll just quickly demo that. Um, so for example, I could put in app server question mark and this would match to a character. So it could be app server A, app server B, app server one, two, three, like that. So I think that's a pretty powerful feature. You can also use wildcards here as well, but don't go crazy with that or you'll allow any machine to connect to your share, which is not good for security. Um, anyways, uh, that will wrap it up for this video. Uh, I hope you liked what you saw and yeah, thanks for watching.